to the celebration of Mass here within our Kingston Channel Catholic Parish. We acknowledge and pray, pay respect to the original and ongoing custodians of the land. We acknowledge their continuing connection to land, seas, air and waterways and commit ourselves to the ongoing journey of reconciliation. We honor elders past and present. Please join us in our entrance hymn. Breaking bread and sharing in life, and in the love we bear is the hope we share. For oh, we believe in the love of our God. We believe in the love of our God. No longer strangers to each other. No longer strangers in God's house. We now fed and we are nourished by the strength of those who care. By the strength of those who care. We are companions on the journey, breaking bread and sharing life. And in the love we bear is the hope we share, for we believe in the love of our God. We believe in the love of our God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Today we break the run of our ordinary Sundays and we celebrate the Feast of the Transfiguration, a feast that is traditionally celebrated on the 6th of August uh, every year. It's a reminder to us that the risen Christ was shown to Peter and James and John as a, an expression of how God has a big dream for us, how God cares for us in the midst of our every day. And as we gather, we're reminded that there are many things that need to be transformed, changed in our lives in order that we might be able to be the daughters and sons that we are called to be. Part of that is we pray for others and we pray for their, their needs. And so as we do each week, I invite you to now turn to somebody near you, ask that person to be your prayer partner and share with them something of what your need might be this day. We place ourselves in the presence of our merciful and loving God. Lord, you are Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendour of the Father. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you live in your church in word and in sacrament. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God Amen. in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you are our Holy One, you are our Lord. You alone, O Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who in the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, confirmed the mysteries of faith by the witnesses, witness of the fathers, and wonderfully prefigured our form of adoption to sonship, grant, we pray to your servants, that listening to the voice of your beloved Son, we may merit to become co-heirs with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> A reading from the book of Daniel. As I watched, thrones were set in place, and one of a great age took his seat. His robe was white as snow, the hair of his head as pure as wool. His throne was a blaze of flames, its wheels were a burning fire. A stream of fire poured out, issuing from his presence. A thousand thousand waited on him. 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. A court was held and the books were opened. I gazed into the visions of the night and I saw coming on the clouds of heaven one like a son of man. He came to the one of the great age and was led into his presence. On him was conferred sovereignty, glory and kingship and men of all peoples, nations, and languages became his servants. His sovereignty is an eternal sovereignty, which shall never pass away, nor will his empire ever be destroyed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is King, the Most High over all the earth. The Lord is King, the Most High over all the earth. The Lord is King, let earth rejoice. Let all their coastlands be glad. Cloud and darkness are his raiment, his throne, justice and right. The Lord, the Lord is King, the Most High over all the earth. The mountains melt like wax. Before the Lord of all the earth, the skies proclaim his justice. All people see his glory. The Lord is king, the most high over all the earth. For you indeed are the Lord, most high above all the earth, exalted far above all spirits. The Lord is king, the most high over all the earth. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. It was not any cleverly invented myths that were repeating when we brought you the knowledge of the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We had seen his majesty for ourselves. He was honoured and glorified by God the Father when the sublime glory itself spoke to him and said, This is my Son, the Beloved. He enjoys my favour. We heard this ourselves spoken from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have confirmation of what was said in prophecies, and you will be right to depend on prophecy and take it as a lamp for lighting a way through the dark until the dawn comes and the morning star rises in your minds. This is the word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. From the Gospel according to Matthew. Glory Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain where they could be alone. There, in their presence, he was transfigured. His, son, his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. Suddenly Moses and Elijah appeared to them. They were talking with him. Then Peter spoke to Jesus. Lord, he said, it is wonderful for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when suddenly a bright cloud covered them with shadow, and from the cloud there came a voice which said, This is my son, the beloved. He enjoys my favour. Listen to him. When they heard this, the disciples fell on their faces, overcome with fear. But Jesus came up and touched them. Stand up, he said, do not be afraid. And when they raised their eyes, they saw no one but only Jesus. As they came down from the mountain, Jesus gave them this order. Tell no one about the vision until the Son of Man has risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is the fourth and the final week of the message series that we've called God of Big Dreams. During the series, we've been listening to Jesus preaching to the people, teaching them in parables. And we hear a constant theme coming through these stories, these parables that Jesus is telling, as Jesus turns to the people and challenges them to listen. The first week he actually said they wouldn't listen and that was the reason he spoke to them in parables and he actually quoted from the prophet Isaiah and he said you will listen and listen again and not understand see and see again but not perceive and then he told them why this was happening he said the heart of this nation has grown coarse their ears are dull of hearing and they have shut their eyes for fear they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, be converted and healed by me. The message that Jesus came to preach was a message of God's love and healing, and yet the people had closed their ears to that message. And we heard over the first two weeks, especially in the parable of the sower and then the sea and the wheat and the darnel, how the people had allowed all of these extraneous things, these barriers, to enter into their story so that they couldn't hear the message of what God's love was about. And how they wanted to find things that satisfied their needs rather than allowing them to actually understand this new life God was calling them to. And then last week we heard those two beautiful little stories about the person, the man who found a treasure in a field and then the merchant who found the pearl of great price. They went and sold everything they had in order that they might be able to possess these treasures. And the question that was asked was, what are we prepared to give up? What are we prepared to let go of in order that we might begin to appreciate the wonder that God has given us? And I use that simple little story about the Indian monk who was able to give away his diamond. And the question the man came back and asked him, give me the wealth, he says, that enabled you to give away this diamond so easily. Because that was the wisdom that Solomon prayed for. Not for power, not for wealth, not for recognition, but rather the wisdom to be able to do the will of God and to make right choices. To be able to say that I want to live as your servant 
And that is the most important thing. God wants us to be his sons and daughters. His big dream is that all mankind, the whole world, will be one community worshipping God and giving thanks for the gifts that God has given us. But if you don't have a degree of faith, a suggestion that we have and speak about the glory of God can sometimes seem way out there and completely out of our understanding. Because what is the glory of God? How do we experience the glory of God in our daily living? Most of us have to say, I really don't. I might have a glimpse, but it's not something that's part of every day. So how do we start to talk to people? How do we start to share with them something of what our faith means that enables them to begin to grasp something of what this message is about? I think the way most of us tell any story is really from our own experience. To talk about what's happened for us, for me, begins to have an impact in the life of others. We see that in today's second reading in particular, where Peter, in his second letter, is writing to the people and saying to them, what we're telling you isn't a myth. It's not something we've created in order to kind of convince you. This is something that he is saying, I experienced. I was there on the mountain when I saw the power of Christ, when I saw what the glory of God was really all about. I was there and I heard God say, this is my son, the beloved. He enjoys my favour. <coughs> God wants us to know his message, but he needs witnesses to make it known. People who are willing to speak about what their faith means, what their story is about. And so it's on this day, the Feast of the Transfiguration each year, when we have a chance to hear from each of the three Gospels, Matthew, Mark and Luke, the story of what happened when Jesus took Peter and James and John to the mountaintop, of how in their presence he was made, or was transfigured in their sight, and beside him were the two great um, men of the Old Testament, Moses and Elijah. Moses, the lawgiver, Elijah, the prophet. And there, in their midst, Christ is shown to be brighter than the sun and his clothes whiter than white. Something happened that made a difference right then and there. And Peter and James and John were able to speak about it in such a way that it changed the face of the earth. But Peter, that enthusiastic, ever willing to do something, to jump in both feet, makes a simple mistake. He says, let's build three tents here. Let's memorialize what's happened. We know throughout the Old Testament, whenever there was an encounter with God, there was a monument that was built and placed there. But the voice of God says, no, this is my beloved son. He is saying to Peter, James and John, saying to us that Mo Jesus is not the same as Moses and Elijah. The fact that they appeared with him does not make them, or the three of them, on the same level. The voice of God says, this is my son, the beloved. My favour rests on him. And so in a powerful way, Jesus is being proclaimed as the Messiah. Moses and Elijah are important, yes, because Jesus is going to be the fulfilment of the Old Testament, the fulfilment of all that promised in the, old, in the old law. But he is the new word of God, spoken into our world in a new and wonderful way. But then, in the light of what we've been talking about over these last three weeks and about the challenge of people being able to hear the parables, hear the story about the message, the Father says, listen to him. And so if we are to know the word of God, if we are to know about God, we actually must listen to his message, listen to his words, but not just listen and not understand, 
see and not grasp what's happening, but with the true eyes of faith, the, the wisdom that Solomon prayed for as he asked to be able to get the story right. I think, as I said before, most times when we try to find something, we actually need the example of others to help us understand what that means. I know this is probably not the um, best example to use at Mass, but I will use it anyway. There was a movie called When Harry Met Sally. It was in 1989. And there's a scene in the movie where the two characters are sitting in a cafe. Sally starts acting quite differently and uh, there's a little bit of consternation about what's going on around them. And the waitress comes up and asks another uh, guest in the cafe, what would you like to order? And she looks at Sally and says, I'll have what she's having. Wouldn't it be really wonderful if people looked at us and said, I want the gift that I've got that sets them apart and makes them different in our world. The gift of faith that enables them to do what God wants in a way that brings joy to them and allows them to rejoice in what they're doing. You know, there's an old saying that um, when people come to communion, somebody should tell their faces that they've been given the bread of life. Because sometimes when you see people come back from communion, they look like they've been to the dentist. <laughs> there is no joy in them. And yet we've just been given the greatest gift. Yes, I know that there is a need for reverence. I'm not talking about irreverence. I'm talking about rejoicing that what you've received is a gift beyond all measure. Let our hearts rejoice. Let our lives celebrate what we've got. Because if we want to invite people to be part of our community, then we need to be people who have a sign about them that says, this is worth coming to. Not because Father Mike's preaching, not because we've got good music, or not because there's morning tea after Mass. But there is something here which speaks about the love of God in a way that gives hope and joy to people. Over the next few weeks, we'll be talking a little bit more, but we're coming up to the start of our Alpha series, which will start on the 17th of August. It's an opportunity for people who are wondering about a relationship with God to come and to learn something about it. Not to suddenly become people who have all the answers, but for the opportunity to come and ask some of the questions. To ask questions in a safe place where nobody is going to tell you that's a stupid question. Where nobody is going to say to you, you don't know that. Where every question you ask is a valid question. An opportunity to sit with others and have a meal together and build a relationship around a table. Not the table of the Eucharist yet, but a table whereby they're invited to share in something that enables them to be at peace and to be able to share with others. You see, we've been given a great gift. When we come to Eucharist, we're given the gift of eternal life. We're given a gift beyond all measure. And so this Feast of the Transfiguration is inviting us to say, in my life, what needs to be transformed? Jesus was transfigured and we were given a sight, an understanding of his glory. But what needs to change in me? that I might be a reflection of that glory to others? What needs to happen in my life so that I can make a difference in the lives of others? Not because I've done something wonderful, but because they see in me something worthy of following, of learning about. Because God has been generous and gracious to each one of us. God has given us many gifts. Our response the invitation of Christ to each one of us is that we should then be generous and gracious to others.
together let us now make our profession of faith. I believe in God, the Father of all time, creator of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the world. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From the dead he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of God's heart. Amen. Friends on the Mount of the Transfiguration, Jesus was revealed as God's beloved Son. Let us take his word to heart and pray through him for all our needs. Pope Paul Francis, the leaders of uh, the church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people struggling with mental health issues, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, for our young parishioners preparing for confirmation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community of faith and our intentions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, who ask for our prideful support. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased family members, relatives and friends, especially Marie Knight, Melissa Jones, Matthew Show, Wine Evans, Manuela Perrin, recently deceased, and all whose anniversaries we recall. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special needs of our community, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of our prayer partner. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We join together in prayer, this sin of prayer. We stand before, before you, Holy Spirit, as we come together in your name. With you alone to guide us, and make us love the right hearts. Teach us the way we must go, and help me out of the street. We are weak and sinful, do not let us have a mind to suffer, do not let the ignorance bring us down the wrong path. No partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity, so that we may journey together to eternal life, and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you, for our good work in every place and time, in the beginning of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. Love you with an everlasting love. 
I have told you, and you are mine. Sing the praise of the Lord and long for Him. He will bring you His light and His hope. I have loved you with an act of God's finger. I have called you and you are mine. sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands before the day is the glory of his name, for an and the of all of his holy church. Sanctify, O Lord, we pray these offerings here made to celebrate the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, and by his radiant splendour cleanse us from the stains of sin, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ your Son. For he revealed his glory in the presence of chosen witnesses, and filled with the great splendour of the bodily form which he shares with all humanity, that the, that the scandal of the cross might be removed from the hearts of his disciples, and he might show how in the body of the whole church is to fulfill, be fulfilled what so wonderfully shone forth first in its head. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. May holy sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death of our Lord until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one 
Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Julian our Bishop, and all those who are called to your service. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, St. Aloysius, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. So at the same as command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's turn to Robert as near as the sign of that peace. <laughs> no, you take away the sins of the world and receive us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and the sinners. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of all the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, Lord I am already a Christian under my roof. But I only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Thank <laughs> you. 
Amen. Let us pray. May the heavenly nourishment we have received, O Lord, we pray, transform us into the likeness of your Son, whose radiant splendour you will to make manifest in his, in his glorious transfiguration, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Um, this uh, coming week is a week of prayer for vocations, and so on Wednesday evening there's a Mass at St Mary's Cathedral for vocations. The information about that is included in the newsletter today. Also, uh, this weekend is the first Sunday of the month, so um, we forgot to organise the second collection, but that's all right. Um, so, and this month it's for sick and tired, I mean sick and retired <laughs> priests. <laughs> um, and so if you'd like to support um, some of the older priests, then that would be really helpful. So if you can't do it this weekend, then um, the basket, it's still over there, isn't it? There's a basket over there and the roof. Yeah, so it'll be available next week. A reminder that uh, this coming Tuesday is the Feast of um, uh, Mary of the Cross and Killer. And so there'll be an extra Mass on uh, Tuesday morning at Christ the Priest. We've also, um, because of a timetable change at uh, St. Aloysius, we've moved the class Masses that we have fortnightly on to Monday morning. So uh, Monday morning will be the class mass at St. Aloysius and Wednesday will revert, revert to normal uh, weekly mass. The following Tuesday is the Feast of the Assumption, so it will be mass again at 9 o'clock at uh, Christ the Priest. It will also be at 6.30 p.m. on Tuesday the 15th, so those dates are coming up. Reminder again, please, um, if you know of somebody who might like to start that journey towards understanding or answering some of the questions that they have, then our Alpha program is starting um, on the 17th of August. And it's open to anyone. Um, as I've said on a number of occasions, um, the answer to any question is either yes, maybe, or no. But if uh, you never ask the question, it's always no. So uh, think about inviting somebody to come along and just see whether they would like to start that journey. Have a great week. Please stay safe and um, keep away from the flu bug. 
the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in the peace of Christ to love and to serve the Lord. And Amen. 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 Sing to the mountain, sing to the sea, raise your voices, lift your hearts. This is the day the Lord has made. Let all the earth rejoice. I will give thanks to you, my Lord. You have answered my plea. You have saved my soul from death. You are my strength and my soul. Sing to the mountain, sing to the sea. Raise your voices with your hearts. This is the day the Lord has made. Let all the earth rejoice. Sing to the mountains, sing to the sea, raise your voice. 